Good day YouTube. Hopefully you guys got through the first tutorial with no problems and as a reward got yourself a little head. Well, let's move on with video number two. Today we're going to be making a torso for our little Lego man of course. First thing we want to do, create new and we will go back to part design. Now that we're in part design, we're going to create a new body. Let's make a sketch. And this time, instead of uh, working from the top, we're going to work from the front. Choosing which way you want to orient your drawing will always help you in the long run. I'm using the front view. You know what? If you're a backdoor man, feel free to work from the back view. It's not going to make a difference in this tutorial. It's whatever you like. So I'm going to go forward, click here, because that's my active front face, and hit OK. So the first thing I want to show you is, let's grab a line up here and just make a line anywhere and hit escape to go to our selection tool. You'll notice here it says that it's not con that it's under constraint and we have four degrees of freedom. What that is saying is that I can manipulate my line in several different ways. First of all, I can make it one axis is longer and shorter. Another one is its rotation. As you can see, I can rotate it left and right. And I can move it up, down, which is another axis, and left and right. So let's constrain these. And if you remember, these are our constraint controls right up here. Now, this is very powerful stuff. And this is a different way of thinking about drafting. But it'll, hopefully, this will make it make sense. If I select the line and give it a horizontal constraint, you'll see this right here, this mark. This is our constraint. If I click on it, you can see it's selected right here in, my, in the box. And you'll notice that now, if I grab this point, I can't rotate it around anymore. I can make it go up and down still. I can make it go left and right. I can make it longer and shorter, but I can't rotate it. And now you'll see it has three degrees of freedom. So let's apply another constraint to this. And we're going to apply a horizontal constraint. So click here. And now if I click here and here, I'll just give it whatever value. And you'll notice it's we're now down to two degrees of freedom. Can move this up and down, left and right. Can't make it any longer. Can't rotate it anymore. Then of course, if I wanted to apply a third constraint, I could. So the fixed places that I can that I always have access to is your center point right there. See, so it goes yellow. That's your zero zero coordinate of your drawing. You have your horizontal line, and you have your vertical line. If I don't have anything selected, I should be able to select the tool, and then I can click here and give it my second point. And now I'll hit escape to cancel. Now I'm constrained. I can still go up and down, but I can't go left and right and so on. Now, of course, I could give it another constraint and we'll do the same thing. So let's unselect this, click one, and we'll click here and we'll do a constraint up to here. And now you'll see the line will turn green and we're fully constrained. That's just a little lesson in constraints. It's very powerful. This is why you do not need to work with a grid view or anything else. Let's get rid of this and let's start from the beginning. And I'll show you some other cool things we can do with this. Uh, let's pick our line tool again. And look, if I go here, you could see our icon for our, for our coincidental fixed objects. You know what? I can actually click it here and then click it again, and you'll know now I have two. If you'll notice, I have an icon for my coincidental mate and one for our horizontal. So that's how you can break really fast. So with this guy here, I actually want to apply, let's give it a distance. So let's look at our little uh, drawing here. So the distance I want to give it is 15.44 millimeters. And you'll notice that it puts it there. Well, let's let's move this kind of closer to the middle. And you can see it's limited to where it can go. I can move up 
I can't move up or down. I can only move left and right because I got one degree of freedom. Oh, this is one of my favorite commands here. If I select this guy here and go select both of the ends of my line and the middle point, it will put it right in the middle. This is some. This is a nice way of centering around a drawing. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's throw in another line. You'll notice that once I hover over here, I can see my mate for our coincidental. So we're constrained right to that point. Now you got to be careful because if you move slightly off, see now, now I got a now I got this mate right here. Well, it's a point object, so I'm actually now linking to this line. Then you can see it turn yellow, and then you, that's that's a mistake a lot of people make. So I'm just going to throw this guy up here like this, and now I'm going to uh, now I'm going to create another line from here to here. And of course, I can wait for it to be horizontal, which is what I want. So I'll click there. Beautiful. And I want to give this guy a measurement the same way. Fix horizontal. Click. And the measurement here is 11.36 millimeters. Beautiful. And because I want to kind of want to, to make it easier to line up for my drawing, of course, I'm going to use my equal distance, my concentric or equal distant mate click here click here and this time i want to bound to the line not the center point like the last time so i'm going to click the line and now as you can see i'm in the middle now finally let's add our nice line and we'll just throw it here just to show you that again if you wanted to click here click here and click our coincidental it will snap together or I can select our, if I don't have anything selected, I can grab our tool, click this point, and again, click this point right here. Make sure I'm at the right one, not at the wrong one. Of course, this won't let me snap it, so to the wrong one, which is good. And click. And now if I click cancel, I'm right where I need to be. If you're an old school CAD guy, you will have noticed we did this all without using grids or snaps or calculating angles or any of that stuff you we had to do back in the day. So my final dimension is let's give it a height. So we'll and because we have one degree of freedom and guess what? That's the only degree of freedom we have left. You can pick points in your drawing, move things around if you ever if you're ever interested in which points uh, of freedom you have. So I'm going to select our vertical. Click here. And I, I can select this point just fine, but I really like to work using my center coordinate as much as I can. So I'll click it here, and now it asks me for what size, and guess what? 12.77 millimeters is the actual drawing. We're fully constrained, solved in zero seconds, beautiful, close. Now that we have our body, let's make it uh, turn it from 2d to 3d so the first thing we want to do just like last time we want to give it a pad now the last when you look at your pad and you get your preview it's too bad that the the line doesn't really show through the middle but i'll show you something i can I, the distance i really want is 7.85 millimeters now I have two ways of doing this. So this way we'll put it into the plus. If I click reverse, it will put it or plus it will put it into the minus. But I can also click symmetrical to plane, which means it will throw it will take half that distance positive and half that distance into the negative. And for this case, I'll show you why symmetric plane kicks some ass. So we're going to click OK. So the next thing you want to do is I want to hollow out the shape because as you know a Lego man in a torso were empty on the inside here so we're going to use a new tool and the easiest way to use this tool is to select a face that you want to left open first and then we're going to click here and make make thick solid bam and now as you can see we're hollowed out except for here now the tool has some a few defaults. 
that I actually don't like. The first one is our joint type. When you look at our joint type, I don't want it arced. I want it to be intersection. So now you can see, instead of being all rounded off, we're squared off. And here's the other thing I don't like. Watch what happens when I change the thickness. See how it gets thicker towards the outside? That's not what I would want as a default. I think as a default, it should make the shell on the inside. And the way you, we actually change that, make thickness by selecting make thickness inward. Click. And now as you can see, when we raise, our, our outside is staying the same. So the thickness we want is 1.5 millimeters. So moving on, now we got this torso it's starting to look more like what we want. So let's make the neck. Click here and I will select make a sketch. Now because we drafted it outward in two directions, symmetrical, we're now actually aligned here right in the middle. So let's make our neck right here, escape, select, um, I want it to constrict by diameter, click my diameter here. And of course, we're going to 4.8 millimeters. Click enter. Now to center this back up, what we want to do is of course, use our concentric tool. So click on here, click in the middle, of course, click in the middle here and we're centered up. Beautiful. So close this up. And now we want to give it a length. Of course, the way we do that, just like we've done it in the past, make a pad. The default is always 10 millimeters, which is of course too big for us. So I'm going to go 5.7. Click enter and look, starting to look more and more like a Lego man uh, torso, isn't it? We're almost done. So let's take this and let's make a drawing. We'll pick a side. We'll pick this guy here. And of course, now that we have our sides selected, you know, we could just hit the uh, make sketch button. Now that we're in our sketch, there's a little weird thing about free CAD. And if you notice, there's an intersection here because it makes this perpendicular. The intersection point is here. It kind of puts it here instead of projecting it at the right angle, putting it there. I don't know if it's going to get fixed, but if you have a really critical dimension along this axis, it might screw you up, but we'll live with it for now. So the first thing to do, let, let's line this back up in the center and let's select our circle. We'll snap it to our line like that. Draw a circle, no matter what size. And the dimension for this is four millimeters. So four millimeters. And I'll put the drawing of this in my Prusa printers. And now we want to go for a height. So of course we want to constrain it using fixed vertical distances. I'll select the middle here and I'll select the middle here. And the distance is actually 7.24. Look at that. Just by freehanding it, we are off by 0.1. That's pretty impressive. 7.2, oh, sorry, 7.23. Now we don't have to be that exact because after all, this is our Lego man. We can put the arms anywhere we want. Click OK, close up the sketch. And what we want to do is of course, we want to make a pocket. So now that we make a pocket, you can either give it a fixed length or type. So the one I really like to use is up to first point. And then what that will do is that will automatically calculate what it needs to go to just to make it long enough to fit uh, to go to here. If you give it a, a fixed thickness, like let's say I gave it 1.5 millimeters right now, if I ever went back and changed the size of my thickness, well, it would make this smaller and it would make the hole go all the way through. Similar if I make the hole too long, it will just go through here and start making punching a hole down here. Let me demonstrate that. So if I go through all, see, it will project it. It will make, an in, in, it, will make it infinitely long. So, so like I said, we're just going to go 
to first. And then that's going to give us a nice, uh, a nice hole. Click OK. So let's select our pocket here. And we'll just hit our mirror command, create a mirrored feature. A mirrored feature will ask us what plane we want to use. And of course, we want to mirror it along this axis here. So we'll just hit that here. We'll hit OK. And we should now have. And it's made a liar out of me. So the one thing that gets me about this command is that you have to select a mirror axis using this drop down. And that's what I was doing wrong last time. Click OK. And beautiful. Now there's just one last thing we have to do. And of course, on a Lego man, it's very, um, it, it has a chamfer in it. So we're going to put a chamfer in. Don't forget to click control. You've noticed me, you've seen me make this mistake so many times. I can just click here, click, 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 click. And now, of course, we'll make our fillet. And our fillet for this is 0.75. Click OK, and there you go. We are done. It is that simple. I'm a small YouTube channel, so toss me a like if you want to help me get noticed by the algorithm. Stay smart, stay safe.